What are the seven things, the seven stages that go into creating a trauma bond? My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and recover from toxic people and narcissists in your life. Okay. The first thing is the love bombing. When they meet you, it's it that includes things like future faking, gift giving, acting like you are the best thing, soulmate talk. I mean, we're talking here not just about relationships as in romantic relationships but even friendships can start this way or even workplaces idealization right um that whole love bombing idealization phase that feels like something beyond any other connection with another human being it feels like something real then what happens that is very unhealthy is the next stage, which is the trust and dependency stage. Okay, this is the grooming phase. This is where they create situations so that you become dependent emotionally upon them. This is where little tiny glimmers of doubt might come in with giant massive love bombing on top of it to start this intermittent reinforcement that then makes you really, really concerned that you're going to lose what you have. The reason it's unhealthy is there's nothing that is creating a foundation for it. It's being created by this person mirroring back to you parts of yourself, mirroring back to you things you've said that that they pretend are their interest or their concern or that they've experienced the same thing, things that make you trust a person. But the thing is, there is no foundation. There's no time. There's no testing the experiences. There's no watching them in life and how they are with other people. There's only this, this streamlined grooming that is happening that starts to get you so dependent on that person, on the relationship itself, okay? Where you're checking your phone for texts, where you're so concerned. It, it stirs up anxiety at the same time as it's creating dependency and trust with that person. And then the next thing that happens is the devaluing, the devaluing, the criticism, the, the subtle put downs. And it may not come like they like you're great one minute and knocked off your pedestal the next. It may be more subtle. You may find yourself saying things like, I wonder if they still care about me. I wonder if they still like me. Oh, I hope they still like me. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. Or you may be saying things to them like, I'm sorry for whatever it is when it really isn't something that maybe you ought to be sorry for. You know what I mean? Where you're starting to have the self-doubt. It could be so subtle that this devaluing starts happening. And then once they're on the devaluing cycle, they stay there, okay? And it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. And then they start throwing in the intermittency of the love bombing and the devaluing, meaning they go back and forth between the two. So, so the next stage or the next element that happens, maybe it's thrown in there with the devaluing is the gaslighting. So once you start seeing who they really are and you start questioning things or you start holding a person accountable to something, which happens naturally in relationships, of course, they begin the gaslighting. They cannot take accountability. They cannot accept that they're not doing anything that isn't absolutely perfect because of course they are. They cannot allow anything that is your opinion or your needs or your point of view to be in the mix because that does not coincide with the narcissistic delusion that they live under about who they think they are. Okay. And so the gaslighting starts. The gaslighting is so confusing. It is so destructive, creates so much self-doubt and so much doubt in the relationship. You don't even know why you're there, and yet you're there. You think, what is happening here? Why? None of this makes sense. You have arguments that are circular. Nothing makes sense anymore. This confusion sets up a pattern in your brain, is really a key element in creating these trauma bonds. So another thing that starts to happen as the stages progress of trauma bonding is you give up, you give in, you give over. You basically just start living with it, just as it is. It becomes normal, you normalize, okay? You normalize in order to stay in the relationship. And then the next thing that happens after that, the progression as it continues, is a loss of self, okay? And as you lose yourself to the relationship and you start to become living for the relationship itself and your whole life is about managing the relationship, then you are lost to self. You are fully immersed in the cycle with this person. Is all of this making sense? You guys leave me some comments. Let me know what's going on with you if you are trauma bonded and 
While you're there, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and let me know what you need as far as help for videos that might help you through this trauma bonding, okay? So once you've lost your sense of self, this is where people get stuck. They heal from trauma bonding, meaning they can get through the addiction and the feelings of needing to reach out to the other person, but finding yourself again. You see, it's so important in every relationship you have in your life to also have a relationship with yourself. And if that gets lost, something is wrong, okay? And then the last thing is there is an addiction to the cycle. That is a physiological addiction to the cycle. There is a dopamine release that happens, okay? We start seeking dopamine starts being released in the brain. It is addictive. Back, like I said, and watch the videos on how trauma bonding affects you, okay? Because I explain it more in detail there. But this addiction to the cycle is a really hard place to be because that's when you realize, wow, I am actually addicted to this. And that's when you have to take some accountability for it and start recognizing that you need help in the situation, whether that be self-help, finding coaching or therapy or friends or clergy or whatever it is to help pull you out of this and give you the support you need as you get yourself away from the situation. So that's in a nutshell how the trauma bonding stages work, what goes on. If you guys have anything to add, please let me know in the comments, okay? And I will see you guys next time. Take care.